I mean, talking about collective, it's kind of linking up to the first uh, session about networks and society. So then when my first thought was collective as opposed to, to what? So I may have to define collective. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought collective as opposed to individual empowerment or individual uh, progress. In most of the research in ACT4D has been mainly kind of focusing on people's empowerment, it's kind of almost like at individual level. So does that person get empowered? Does that person not get empowered? So <clears throat> Maybe then the question is, do we need to move to the collectives? We're going to be looking at people as a, as a group. And I think we should to an extent. Maybe, maybe not as exclusive, but maybe both individuals and as collective. And collective, I'm looking at it as a, a society, as, as a community. I know that word is, uh, again, overloaded, I think, based on the, the previous session. I mean, for example, I mean, currently I'm doing work where we're looking at, at groups. So we're looking at uh, groups of, of women or groups of youth. In the in the urban poor areas to see how they can use how they use technology and how we can involve them in co-designing solutions, okay, as a group. So what we have seen so far, I think, is kind of linked to to the discussion a bit earlier on, is that groups are not homogeneous; they are so different. So I've seen actually okay, that the the groups of of um, of women behave and perceive ICTs and behave and see their needs and their context as different from the group of youth. So when we think of uh, solutions and we think of uh, doing things, I think we cannot just have one solution for groups and, and try to impose it as sort of transplant it across groups. I think we need to, to study and, and look at these groups uh, um, in more detail to, to understand how this, uh, these groups differ. Um, then back to the, the point of collective, I'm just thinking why have we in the past focused more on individual as opposed to, to collective much more? I thought maybe it's, it's coming from the almost capitalism kind of thing or almost the, the Western ideology where we kind of tend to see people as individuals with their individual aspirations and uh, working hard to, to uplift themselves. But my experience from working in Africa, on being from Africa, I'm not sure about, uh, about Asia, is that actually, if you go to, to the poorer communities, often people work as groups, as communities. So often people work together to construct a hospital or a clinic in the area. I mean, work together to construct a school for their children, or work together as a group, say, so, okay, maybe, maybe we have a bridge across the river go to the next village. Then all of a sudden, it's okay. I mean, if doing telecenters, then you should think as individuals. We think of ICT. It's almost moving from what they do normally into some other space. So maybe somewhere there, there's a disconnect. So maybe we should start to think of uh, interventions to see, can we address the needs of these people as a community? Maybe that's one way we could get the, the uptake and, and, and things going. Of course, I don't know how to measure those things. How can we measure whether a group has advanced or not? I mean, because there are many theories on, on, that, on that aspect. So maybe they still need to work on, uh, on theories and concepts to, to define and measure and study uh, groups. And on, the, on that topic again, then I thought of Okay, it's kind of easy when you kind of look at telecenters, but maybe if moving to mobile, to think of collective, how do we think of collective as uh, in a mobile phone era? Then I remember the paper, I mean, I can't remember the author, but then this guy was I mean, writing about Uganda and, and was talking about different, almost levels of ownership of technology. That we kind of almost assume that it's one, tech, one gadget, one person, but sometimes it's not that way. I mean, it could have a, a cell phone you know, which is shared amongst people. So maybe I could own a phone and then she could be operating it, she could be using it, and then I mean, maybe five of us could be benefiting from it. So maybe I think these are issues which we have to be first to be thinking about that even mobiles can be, are shared in some way or could be shared for the benefit of, um, of a group. I mean, another concept I've seen, I've come across in my, in my own work 
I mean, so especially amongst the, the women, where these groups were not so ICT literate, so kind of thing, I mean, they don't even think of ICT as a tool for their empowerment. But almost in every group, by magic or by chance, there was somebody, maybe one person who had the, some ICT skills. And these people kind of tended to almost grow into that role and they would be searching for information for the rest. So like if there's a need to do something, then they'll get other people to, um, so okay, maybe ask one so she knows what to do. So this kind of brings the, the concept of intermediaries uh, that maybe I think where people cannot access uh, uh, technology because of lack of skills, maybe I think intermediaries within the group or outside the group could be um, solicited or are solicited naturally to, to support group empowerment. Um, <clears throat> of course, I mean, this was this question on, I mean, how do you research group I mean, collective empowerment? I mean, what are the best methods of doing this and so on? For which I don't have, uh, I don't have answers yet, but maybe I think it's uh, as part of the, the discussion we, we can have today. So that's my, my take on for the talk. Thank you very much.